कुछ काम थे अपनी मर्जी के कुछ काम फ़कत मजबूरी थे फिर वक्त बहुत ही थोड़ा था और सारे काम ज़रूरी थे माई नेम इज़ हारिस खलीक एंड आई कम फ्राम पाकिस्तान आई राइट पोइट्री एंड नॉन फिक्शन The best thing about being a writer in Pakistan is that you can actually chronicle the suffering and the pain that we are going through right now. That gives you an opportunity. It's a, it's a, it is not just catharsis for yourself, but it also gives a voice to people who are not represented. And uh, this is a choice that you make as a writer or as a creative artist. And I do not see a difference between uh, the aesthetics and the subject uh, per se. Uh, uh so art has to bring the two together it has to be uh any creative piece that we do um uh has to uh you know have that uh creative uh, 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 uh beauty about it or 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 the and the beauty could really be the ugliness of it also uh, but at the same time it has to uh, i mean i believe that it has to give voice to the people who are voiceless and who are dispossessed and uh, that is something that is good about being a writer or a poet in pakistan uh, uh in you know in in present day and age um and uh, the worst thing is that uh, about being a writer or poet is that you um not just about being a writer or poet but also you know any kind of uh, creative work you do or journalism or if you are a political worker then these are difficult times and uh it's it's a uh, you know uh, it is not just the state it is actually not the state as much it is the state also in its institutions but not the state as much but the the uh the non state actors and the extremist outfits and people who want to uh curb any voices of any uh, or any uh, uh you know criticism uh, or anything which challenges the monocracy of uh, of uh, religion or of uh, certain ideologies uh, uh, so you know that that makes it very difficult for anybody uh, who has an expression or who who wants to uh, raise her voice the best thing about pakistan is its people uh, i think the uh, countries are not defined by their uh, by their territories as uh, uh you know as it is understood in international relations or 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 global politics uh it is about the people of pakistan it is not the rivers mountains deserts and ocean it is about 180 million people uh, who are very warm who are very hospitable and and there are problems i mean of course in like in any society pakistan is own is its own set of problems but it's a resilient bunch of people that we are it's it's a it's a complicated uh, question that who do i write for because uh, primarily i write for myself uh, i mean i want to write for myself and i do write for myself i would like to write what i would want to read so i am the first reader uh, but at the same time as i said earlier that i actually write for uh, for people uh, who i would want to represent and who i would want to position myself with and uh, that i think is a deliberate choice um so it is it is basically um you know uh, people who read uh, poetry and people who read uh, uh, non fiction or or are interested in in issues that i am interested in which are of course people politics uh, and uh, poetry again there is no one person really it's a difficult question um uh, because you know i would take many names uh but to um, i would i would i would say that you know off off the top of my head uh, as it were because you know uh, just yeah. for the sake of uh, uh, taking this conversation forward i think somebody who we really uh, uh, i would really uh, like people in the in in other countries to read uh sadat hasan manto everybody uh, knows about him of course but he is very important and relevant even today uh 60 years uh, after his death 
Uh, but at the same time, among the contemporary writers, I think Fahmida Riaz uh, is, has to be read. She is one of our, uh, you know, arch uh, poets, not just a feminist poet, but she, of course, is a feminist. She started off as a feminist poet, but she has uh, then branched out into many other areas. Uh, Asad Muhammad Khan, he's a, he's a, uh, he writes short stories, short fiction. Uh, I am not sure if uh, Asad Muhammad Khan's or Fahmida's works are translated in English as much as they should have been translated, uh, but they are both, uh, you know, very valuable writers. Then we have, uh, um, uh, you know, people writing in uh, in other languages in Pakistan. These two are Urdu writers uh, who must be, uh, uh, you know, read and, uh, and, and appreciated really, critically appreciated. Two English writers for your interest particularly are both poets. One is Tawfiq Rafat and the other is Maki Qureshi. Uh, both have passed away. Uh, the other two I have mentioned, uh, uh, the Urdu writers are uh, alive and writing and, uh, and producing really valuable stuff. But Tawfiq Rafat and Maki Qureshi as uh, English language poets from Pakistan are very important to be read. State should support uh, and encourage the agency and ability of people to engage in creative activity uh, and that that means that you know it is not just simply about giving out money to people to to be able to write and to be able to paint it is about creating an atmosphere and encouraging an atmosphere through uh, institutions uh, and creating public spaces for people where they can actually uh, you know uh, express uh, what they believe in and what they want to write and what they want to uh, to create. Um, so it is, uh, uh, it's, it's a difficult, uh, again, uh, you know, th there has to be a balance which needs to be maintained because if a state starts sponsoring literature, then it becomes problematic. But at the same time, state should have, should provide the, the spaces and spaces include economic spaces also uh, for writers and for artists to, to, uh, uh, to produce. This is not my first time in the United States, so I'm familiar with, with the states, but at the same time, um, this is my longest stint, so to speak. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's almost a, a whole semester, the fall residency. Um, something that really uh, inspires me about Iowa City is, I mean, I like the people here and I like the international writing program. Uh, you are, uh, you know, a great uh, uh, team. Uh, but the library in the Iowa, in the University of Iowa, is something really fascinating. I mean, the library system in the U.S. is, uh, you know, is really uh, amazing. It's the eighth wonder of the world, uh, you know, if you allow me to use a cliche. But uh, it, it's not, uh, 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 you know, something that we actually would like to have for students and young people in our countries. Uh, but the University of Iowa library uh, is, uh, you know, uh, is the most fascinating and amazing thing that I've experienced here. My work in uh, Urdu poetry, uh, there's something uh, different about it, uh, uh, which is the portraiture of, of uh, people, ordinary individuals, uh, uh, belonging to different professions, belonging to different uh, social classes. And unfortunately, until now, most of that work, the character-based poems, the portraitures, have not been translated into English. Uh, so nobody asks me here about, you know, that part of my work, which I think is quite significant uh, for Urdu readers and for, uh, for Urdu critics. So uh, I would really want that work to be translated. I have a disadvantage here because I also write in English. Uh, so the translators uh, uh, somehow at a subconscious level think uh, that uh, I can translate my own work, uh, you know, and which is uh, not always the best way to go about it. Any final words or thoughts? Uh, well, thank you very much for uh, uh, hosting us here in the International Writing Program. It has been a, a great experience and it has uh, given people like, uh, you know, our people who have come from countries which are uh, uh, going through difficult times. It gives us an opportunity to think and reflect and read and write. 
uh, and meet with other people and learn about what is happening in other languages and cultures. Because you see something that is really different about uh, a program in which you, are, uh, you, you live with uh, contemporary writers uh, is that you get a flavor. I mean, for instance, now I know better what is happening in Arabic or Hebrew or, or Portuguese or Spanish literature uh, in, in my time. What uh, uh, writers of uh, a few years younger or my age or a few years older uh, are thinking because what we get to read is Neruda and Octavio Paz and, and Borges and uh, you know people who, who are not there anymore uh, uh, if, if, if I speak about Spanish literature uh, so now I know what the you know the what is happening currently uh, in these languages and that I think is a, is a, is a big uh, uh, advantage of uh, intermingling with uh, writers your age or from your generation, a few years younger, a few, a few years older, of course. Thank you. Thank you.